per budget. Uh, um, uh, in, in one sense, we can say that uh, it's, it's totally uh, repurposing of everything in pandemic in a war scenario, that how we can come together and to see that um, uh, we can fight this war, whatever weapons, either whatever armors we have against uh, this pandemic. It was not a uh, far with missile, but it is a far with medicine, either uh, the, the, the thing that we are... Um, so I, I thought that let's talk about something that uh, existed long time back, the copper. And the copper in COVID uh, has played very important role. So I thought that being an institute of technology and then also management, uh, how we can really uh, amalgam both together to, to develop something. And that will be really uh, uh, talking us, either taking us uh, that the civilization that we, we had long time back. So if you see that this element in the periodic table, enjoys very good to oxidation state. And everybody does in the life that we have the two roles to play uh, professional and personal life that we talk about. So when we talk about the personal life, when we talk about the professional life, our oxidation state gets changes uh, because of the some energy that we have to apply. And, and then we, we, we reach to this level. But it's very essential both to balance it, professional as well as personal life. And, and, and keeping this copper, I, I chose is that is a very beautiful element in the periodic table. And uh, what cannot be done with this copper? I'll just I'll take you to the my next slide. Um, I'm allowed to uh, move from here. Either I have to uh, uh, to click from here. Yeah, now it's okay. So it is, it is working. So uh, if you just look at this, that why copper was used by uh, our ancestor. You see that... Uh, uh, you, you talk about the bracelet, you talk about the colors that we use for the prayer, you talk about the, the part that we use to take for the water, but there should be some genesis behind that. Why we had to choose the copper, uh, reason being is that uh, it must be having some very beneficial uh, role to play in our life. So I thought that let's talk about the copper, that how copper was very essential and important in the COVID time. Uh, so I, I, I took uh, this picture from the NATE, uh, Sanskriti culture of India.com, uh, from where I thought that uh, we use um, the bracelet, we use uh, our doing the prayer for making the swastik, either um, uh, to, to, to do any kind of very festive, either a very ceremonious uh, occasion, then when we enjoy, we always keep the copper. And the beauty of this copper is that if you talk about that, what benefit that we have got from this one. So if, if you look at this um, copper that we talk about, uh, I just taking one example of the bottle that we have got here. You, you just look at the property just by uh, incubating your water uh, in the terms of technology, that if you put water and you take it, what type of property that we have got? If you if you start counting from my left to right, either from your right to left, uh, you will find in a circular uh, clock that it has got many type of advantages, talking from antimicrobial to antiviral, either we are taking every day karha, either we are taking many things to enhance our immune system. It existed, it existed, but we lost our 17th, 16th century invention, either that uh, we had in our hand to utilize it. And this is what made us that uh, we moved from the invention that we had in our ancestor time to, to look for something very cheap, easily available, not putting that much energy and mind behind that to have the synthetic polymer. And now you can see the synthetic polymer that is every, everywhere. Either you drink water, you take in synthetic water. You are wearing a chapel, either sandal that is also a plastic. Even a, any kind of thing that you talk about, we are able either the item that we are going to ingest is made up of some polymer. And that polymer is very dangerous for us. And that's why uh, I thought that today I will uh, take a genesis that why copper is so important. Our, our ancestors were very intelligent and smart to use it. Uh, keeping this in mind, um, being a chemist, uh, always I try to see that how we can correlate this personal and professional life with this electronic configuration because every one of us is having some electronic configuration. And this ele electronic configuration uh, defined us, either that also uh, direct us that uh, how do we behave? How do we learn? How do we uh, uh, you know, react in the society? 
So if, if, if we would like to distribute something in the terms of chemistry and then 29 electrons that I have got, then if I go to the above principle, either the principle that exists, I have to put in my two pen antimate orbitals, 4s2 and 3d9. But if you look at these two orbitals, if they have got 4s2 and 3d9, my neighbor is not very happy because he has got only 3d9 and he's not stable. What it talks about in the terms of chemistry and then in the terms of society. If I'm happy, I don't care about others that if they are happy or not. But you look at this element is so exceptional in periodic table that it says that no, 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 no. We both of us has to be very happy and then we can enjoy the symbiosis together. So why don't you take what I have extra and that makes me stable and make me happy and also you become happy. That's why you look at the the at the 4S1 and 3D10 that it talks about is half filled and completely filled. It means that my neighbor is happy, I'm also happy. And this gives us to do a technology and to gives us a, uh, a learning process that how we can learn from the periodic table and elements, they live in exception by leaving their electron that you take it, you become happy and also I become happy. And this is the genesis that I love the copper that much is that my ancestor, they did it. And, and looking at this one, uh, you just look about this one that uh, how nicely it was designed and the pure copper you look at, it gives a, such a gorgeous look that uh, uh, you, cannot, you, you cannot even move out of it. Any, any, anything that uh, is colorful that you eat today uh, is, is rich in the copper. So it's learning from the copper, helping our health, boosting immune, what you want to invent in the, in the COVID uh, pandemic uh, to, to enhance everything to fight with the war. And that's what we had over here. So I like this uh, copper that uh, everybody buys the silver and the gold, but when I look at the copper, it really drives me uh, crazy. That is such a beautiful element, very gorgeous look. And then you can make whatever you like, it's starting from home to outside to building, to building the human, either to the brain where monoamino oxidase is very essential enzyme where you need the copper to drive many, many type of neurotransmitter. And, and keeping this one, um, uh, what I thought about that, you, you see that copper does not exist in only one isotopic either iso, isobaric form when you talk about. You see that how many elements, hundreds of isotopes we have got. Now we have to choose it that which uh, isotope that you would like to take for which application if you are an electronic engineer, either you are a mechanical engineer, either you are an um, uh, electrical engineer, you choose this copper in a different form to wire the metal where you say that I have got the armature. I, if I'm an electronic, then also I put some circuit out of it. And then if I'm someone working in the conduction where I want to have that very high good conductivity, either to design something that can, can help everywhere to be very good conducting material, Conduct means that uh, we are very useful at, uh, on this one. But if you look in the periodic table, I love this copper 64 and then copper 67 because I work from Institute of, I come from the Institute of Nuclear Medicine where we try to exploit the nuclear properties for health, for human health. And this uh, gives us a, a, a very good element in the periodic table that how we can diagnose and how we can treat it and where we try to to see that we can develop something that can be useful for uh, human health and that is a different domain altogether but what we have to to go through the today is in this uh, covid outbreak is that you see that how copper was utilized externally and internally by repurposing it and repurposing means that we were trying to to develop something you just look at mask anti-COVID. And if you have something that if, if it's going to interact uh, virus, either bacteria, either fungus, they are going to die because it has got a very inherent property to change its electronic configuration when it binds with the uh, with the, any biological material. And, and in which concentration we determine that in which concentration and which isotope should be used for this application. So this is, a, you, you can look Right now that everywhere in the world, people, they want to develop a mask 
that is made up of copper and uh, our people were not uh, idiot at that time when they were getting all these sarees and dresses where all this gold and iron they were embroidered and they were loaded with that we are so rich because we are knowing that this will have a very inherent effect that if you are going somewhere in any function then it will protect from uh, surroundings that whatever we are going to to be to be in in contact either we are going to to see around that what type of uh, material moving around so it was a very nice genesis even in that time to design the clothes that we had got look at this if you have a viral infection if, if there is no metal inside it goes replicate and does the duty to kill us but if i have got the metal line inside it binds it doesn't allow to replicate and then virus the dies so that is the mechanism they propose which is a very superficial that uh, in the term of any layman can understand it binds and it doesn't allow to replicate because i'm blocking some of the 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 activity of this virus so it should not move but we'll go further and we'll analyze more that why it is so important and it is uh, essential and then how it binds because whenever i read the ancestral article and our mythology that i used to have the copper in my hand and we used to have the uh, all the mug and glasses to drink the water so then i thought that let's explore it and if you look at this uh, cartoon that what i'm trying to see that look that copper how many type of activity activities does we around the covid 19 it kills it destroys it do the ns stylus size system where is a very good to to protect from any type of disease that is going to happen like you talk about the cytokine storm that people were trying to to quantify and they were saying that oh the dimer and this is very increased and the same time they were saying that we are going to have some cardiac problem then we are going to have the diabetic problem then deficiency of vitamin d vitamin d that d that we talked about at the same time in the left hand side the immune response is going to compromise and uh, viral load is going to increase what copper does you can see that it increase the absorption it try to destroy that inflammation doesn't take place it absorbs iron that you have the good hemoglobin and also it try to stop the collagen signing that we talk about that it doesn't go so you you can see the beauty of the copper now um, it depends on us depends on the group of the people that how we are going to 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 use the copper for this application in the covid outbreak so uh, being a chemist till that if i don't justify that uh, you are saying that okay copper goes copper binds we inhale it it does the work but uh, we have to also demonstrate how it binds how it binds and who binds it and then how it is taken so just look at we have many proteins we have three types of molecule that we'll talk about later uh, either you talk about lipid we talk about amino acid we talk about nucleosides when we talk about nucleosides is look at the copper it goes with bind with methionine which is a very good binder for this one and it is engulfed by endocytosis and in a very strong form that it it is it is bound so if you look at the caricature you look at the cartoon that i show you that it binds with the methionine it binds with methionine in a very nice manner but as a chemist again i have to exploit in a different way that how it looks in the protein and what is the binding constant that no other uh, protein either nucleo nucleosides either lipid is going to take this copper from uh, uh, the nature has designed the protein copper sits there does the job and then finally it releases out when it when it is required it gets metabolized and then uh, the, the entire work is done so we did a lot of chemistry around to to design the molecule that which is the best suited molecule that has very high stability under physiological ph so that you can you can see that nature does very nicely with the histamine that it has got a very high binding constant of course uh, being a chemist we can design looking at the many many uh, donor atoms in this one that how uh, this copper is going to be uh, you know uh, uh, to to loaded either to wrapped very strongly under physiological condition so this is the chemistry that talks about that copper binds and is taken by some of the receptor that i will i will discuss maybe uh, uh, if i if i have got the slide but there are many many uh, molecules is designed by us mostly design few of them by me that is called misra method to develop this chelators to hold the copper ion very strongly under physiological condition 
So the, we have got many type of receptor that is called CLTR1, CLTR2 receptor, that is the transporter from the copper. I, I, I didn't took the cartoon region being that maybe it will be overloaded in 20 minutes to, to discuss more, but if anybody has a question, certainly we can dwell upon it. So we designed the molecule in such a way that copper is engulfed and also it is ready to poise to react with the biological molecules and then it is taken care. So just look at this one example that I was showing in the previous slides that where I had highlighted about the N style cysteine, where this is one, one job is done by copper very nicely. So we talk about this one leucine amino transporter that where copper is bound, bound and is also taken to the system to demonstrate it, it goes inside human body and how it goes. So we do a lot of preclinical studies. And then when copper is loaded, we try to see that how it is taken by the receptor that is CLT, CLTR1 receptor, either CL2R receptor. And then you can see that we develop a mouse model where we have given the radioactive material loaded pre when it is taken by system, then finally it goes and binds there where it does the DOP. So this is the proof of concept that we say that whatever that our ancestor that they were working with the copper to, 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 to take every day with the defined dose by keeping certain hours, what is the leaching time? And then finally it, it does the treatment for the, for the application that was avisaged either that we think about. So this is the a complete story that how copper is taken and, and is demonstrated today scientifically that how copper is taken. That's why our ancestors were very intelligent and we did the repurposing right now. Now let's go about that. What other thing that we were able to do during this time period uh, by, by, by killing this uh, uh, virus by developing some of the molecule, which is very essential and is very important. And then some of the things that you guys have heard in the news that what in mass has given to the country and to the world in this area. So let's talk about uh, one of very important system that we always say that we, we try to generate radical. And radicals are so reactive with very uh, less biological and uh, physiological half-life and they kill the virus. So you see that our system in, in hemoglobin that we have got, there is a molecule called porphyrin. And this porphyrin is uh, very life sensitive. So when you put the copper, it becomes doubly sensitive because we are giving the two synergistic system, the copper as well as the porphyrin. They goes, they react with the light, then they become the uh, uh, kind of photosensitizer and that becomes a very uh, radical kind of things that they are going to the excited state, generate reactive oxygen species in the term of the different form of the oxygen and that oxygen reacts with the biological molecule and that the, does the damage. And this is what we have exploited uh, and many people, they are also trying to, to use this methodology to, to develop many drugs and many, uh, uh, you know, um, external, external protection system. And uh, that's why the people are trying to, you know, mobilize uh, uh, copper and the copper complex on the surface of uh, materials to, to do the job to produce the uh, reactive oxygen species, either NO that can do the job. So this is the one area that is being very, very well exploited that is also being used by many clinicians in the world. Uh, it's called photodynamic therapy, but due to some limitation that uh, the property that we have in internally that they, they have the same kind of light. So it's very difficult to distinguish sometimes if you want to treat some tumor, which is very deep seated and then also the light that we are going to give. So it's not to generate something that can cause uh, danger to the neighboring uh, tissues. So uh, in the COVID, uh, when we were looking about that virus and all this structure by cryo-electron microscope, many understand that uh, how it looks like, what is the spike, what type of uh, uh, protein that is overexpressed, and then how we can really track and how we can kill it. So many people were talking about this uh, uh, chlorohydroxychloroquine, uh, are we doll that we are talking? What they do is that they try to see that on this receptor, I will not dwell upon as much one, that we, we try to see that how we can un coat it. And once it is uncoated, it's become naked, then it's generally stopped at this level. And if this is not stopped at this level, then finally 
it goes to the second level where that again we try to see that what type of nucleotide so first we try to to kill at the surface whatever protein glycoprotein either anything is overexpressed to to make it naked so it is is killed it doesn't multiply if we are not succeeding and this one then it goes to the second phase where all this dna and rna multiplication takes place where remdesivir and other derivative of the molecule that again again you look at this all these molecules if we say that it was a innovation medical innovation i will say i differ strongly that there is no innovation on this one we did the repurposing of the drug because you know uh, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine anybody was having malaria at that time first time of first type first line of the treatment in our age time that if i have a fever they give the chloroquine because we are subjected to some mosquito bites and that was the reason that how we can certainly utilize this knowledge that this will be very useful but once it crosses then certainly we have to design very smart material very small molecule that that is stop at the second step if we are not able to stop at the second second step then certainly we have to think about all this interleukin all this antibodies on the third step to do the therapy and to increase the biological half life retention half retention time of this molecule that can be for the longer period they do not metabolize having 150000 so treatment can go for few days using this met methodology so in this that uh, many thing that came out uh, you know that uh, sanofi that came with the pulcavenil compound that they were again talking about that they made some hydroxychloroquine derivative to to make this molecule and is available they tried in the beginning it was very uh, effective almost 70% in the france and european country but you know when the passage takes place it it is is very difficult to control at the outer layer then this molecule was given in the beginning to as a prophylactic but after that again uh, they had to move to uh, the drugs that we were talking about Uh, dna based either rna based either vaccine that 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 was developed either that is in the process of development so keeping this in the lead that uh, uh, oh my god where is my other slides i missed whatever okay so uh, so you you just look at this uh, this this structure that what i want to share with you is that uh so uh, the molecule that i showed you before that hydroxychloroquine that we were talking about in the similar manner at our institute we develop a derivative that is analog of hydroxychloroquine it has already gone all the pre clinical and other studies that is the new molecule will be coming because our main uh, idea behind this is that we wanted to have the synergistic effect so we introduce a, a linker inside that we can hold the copper very strongly under physiological condition and that can be exploited for again the same uh, pathway and the same receptor uh, having the synergistic effect to work on you, you see that uh, again that there were many 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 candidates based on nucleosides they were trying to develop but again uh, if you were not able to to attack on the first level uh, that's why they the people were trying to see that we can inactivate it and uh, have the whole killed virus to inject and to to enhance your uh, immunity either to produce the antibodies against any par par foreign particle uh, uh, besides that uh, again that we try to see that we can take the whole uh, uh, the virus and to modify in such a way that again this becomes uh, uh, a kind of uh, developing a immune system by some modification that is not going to 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 create a problem so we try to make some of the some unit some modification in this that that doesn't translate after that doesn't multiply after that is only for the purpose of uh, uh, producing the antibody against this so what we do is that being a chemist we try to see that where to terminate it terminate on the three primes either five prime so we play with these nucleosides and by playing this we are able to to develop many many molecules that where what phosphorylation can take place and where we can think that we can do the modification that will not allow to further pro pro propagate either to initiate either to 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 to, to multiply and in this this is the ram the severe molecule that we talk about with the sum of the introduction of aliphatic chain to enhance its lipophilicity but again same time to modify the terminal where no um, proliferation and no binding takes place so we have blocked all the site but it is a very useful drug and the reason being that uh, 
uh, it was tried, it was seen, but you know, uh, when it goes from again second stage to third step, it is of no use. And that's why uh, uh, Institute of Nuclear Medicine and Life Sciences, we thought that what could be the therapeutic drugs that we can think about. And then we came out that, can we develop some chemical chaperones that we use every day in our institute to see the disease uh, oncologically and neurologically. And this, we try to see that, can we have the GLUT receptor, either we can have the amino acid based protein, either molecule that can be exploited for uh, diagnostic application and therapeutic application. And the last one is the nucleosides in this one. Just look at this one, the GLUT receptor, that first slide in my completely uh, first cartoon that we talk about the GLUT receptor, why genesis took place about this uh, 2-deoxy glucose that is being talked about. Uh, is analog of again glucose and then chloro deoxy glucose is another analog of deoxy glucose is widely utilized well exploited almost everywhere in the world to do the oncological uh, diagnosis so any type of tumor that proliferate they need to have the glucose because that is the food that is available to them and when they multiply we try we chemists we try to play with the molecule in such a way that sometimes they cross first or second stage, but when they go to the second stage, then enzyme, they say that you cannot go there and they are trapped there and they stop entire cascade of the reaction. So you can just look at here that fluorodeoxyglucose we give there. In the first stage, enzyme is not able to, to recognize because uh, it is just like a, uh, uh, we cheat to the security guard and then after that it goes there and it gets converted in the fluorodeoxy glucose 6 phosphatase phosphate but from there they know that on the second position these guys they have done some modification so then suspicion starts and this is not allowed to further metabolize to produce the energy and here we stop and that is the reason this radioactive material get stopped get trapped there and we are able to visualize it very nicely to to oncological manifestation this is what you, you do by just changing one of the glucose analog that we have got by putting the fluorine 18 here and you are able to see entire body that where it is accumulated, what type of disturbance has taken pl place at which organ and what is the metabolic uh, uh, pathway, either what is the metabolic rate that is going on. So there is also some false and uh, uh, negative results that we get it but there are a method to see that how we can certainly correct it. What I wanted to communicate here is that this was the lead for us that we work every day for almost 15 years in this area that this fluorodeoxygen case, we supply almost everywhere in the country uh, to, to do the imaging for oncological, I produce it in mass. This is the one of the pet tracer that we produce, but there are many other we produce that nobody does in the country. So by taking from the lead other group, they were, that is called radiation biology group that they were working and they were trying to treat the cancer cell line. And that was the genesis that if it works in this one, then virus, bacteria, others, they also need uh, these food vehicles to, to get them to get the energy to to propagate and to to survive so they try to do uh, similar fashion with the virus and then success was there and it becomes a very nice drug what i wanted to share this is the pathway already that i talked about but what i want to say here is that just look at this what we inject uh, uh, to the patient to, to visualize such a beautiful image that we inject not more than 1.14 nanograms of this molecule that is level. And then if you talk about in the terms of radioactivity, 1.14 nanogram is almost nothing. When you talk about the sugar that what we give, that is the one teaspoon sugar is served is almost a, around three gram of sugar. And one gram, one grain of sugar is about 0 0.4 milligram that we talk about. And what we inject is this one grain divided 340,000 times. So you can see that people, they talk about that the sugar fluctuation, this fluctuation, Will you believe that this is so negligible that it cannot alter any metabolic pathway, but it does the job. And this is why that we are able to see uh, in the virus that this molecule was repurposed by starting from glucose to deoxyglucose. And then we were able to, to see uh, uh, in CCM Hyderabad, uh, one of my scientists that he went there and did the studies. It was very encouraging. Already we had the uh, uh, oncological uh, uh, file pending in our drug controller of India with uh, Reddy Lab from Hyderabad. And then it was 
very boosting for us that we got the clearance to do the phase two trial, phase two A trials, and finally we got the phase three trials done. And then we got the emergency approval for doing either repurposing the drug. I will not say the medical innovation, but whatever we had, we tried to develop our armor for this pandemic and to, to, to control the disease, either to fight against uh, COVID by um, doing PPE testing, either sanitizer, either making the drug, either finally uh, providing the drug uh, to the different uh, part. Uh, and this was completely driven by our Nand and uh, secretary and chairman DRDO, uh, Dr. G. Satish Reddy, because he took the initiative in the pandemic when everything was locked to, to, to get things done by providing aircraft, providing uh, opening the shops and providing everything, whatever was needed. So uh, to save the lives. So this is what uh, uh, our defense uh, purpose is that we do the suraksha and also we do the swast. So it makes both together. Wow, we can see our civilian and defense population are protected with war, any kind of the war. With this, I give my thanks to everyone and I'm open for any question and uh, um, uh, queries that you guys have in your mind. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mishra, for your such an excellent talk. In fact, new things we came to know, which existed in the uh, in the Indian system, and uh, <clears throat> there were so many questions that were coming I'm, up. I'm, I'm, um, maybe, uh... Can't you hear us, sir? Can you hear Hello? us? May I request all others to please mute your mic? Ma'am, it's still Raj. not audible. There's something wrong either my side or your side. I don't know. I'm audible, ma'am. <laughs> you, you are audible. You, yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you, but uh, I don't know why uh, it's something wrong. Raj Mahanti ji. Hello. Can I ask a question, madam? Yes, yes Raj Mahanti ji, can I request you to please yeah. mute your mic just for a couple of minutes? I'll come back to you. Yeah, sure, ma'am. Yeah. So, can you hear us, uh, Dr. Mishra, sir? You can't hear us? Okay. <clears throat> ma'am, uh, still not audible. So, is So my dear uh, <clears throat> participants, <clears throat> it has been a unique privilege for all of us that uh, we listened to him, to Dr. Mishra. If you have any questions, please write on the chat box. I will copy paste here. He will be uh, able to answer. Please, uh, any question, please type and then I will be, um, I will be taking yeah, the question. Yeah, 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 please. Well, uh, 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 Raj Surya Kiran, uh, she is asking that uh, is remdesivir is a stable drug for suppressing the COVID-19 attack? Yes, at certain extent, if it is not too late, it's very good drug. Reason being is that uh, if it is not given in five to ten days after that, when oxygen saturation is going down, it will be very useful. But if it is already gone, where you need to have the antibody treatment, either the cocktail, then certainly a few things has to be monitored as all clinician knows that. If is the cardiac problem, either some comorbidity is there, that has to be monitored very uh, um, simultaneously. Otherwise, it will not be very suitable. Any other questions you have? A anyone from the audience? Please write on the chat box so that uh, he can see.
Uh, well, uh, there are a couple of drugs uh, in pipeline, but you know, uh, during this pandemic, when we uh, try to get the clearance, because we have to also get the data. So whenever we try to do on the subject, when it times comes out, then the peak it goes down. So now we are we are having a protocol that we are going to try this uh, drug simultaneously whenever it comes out uh, in the phase one with the limited uh, uh, patient, either healthy volunteer. And if we do not have any side effects, certainly we'll proceed because already these drugs are being used for some other application. So uh, we have the uh, two, three uh, drugs that is in the pipeline uh, in the form of uh, you can say injectable, either in the form of a tablet that you see in the case of 2D oxygen Thank Well, uh, the variants that, that we talk about, the most of the time that what we are trying to target is that, uh, is the glucose metabolism that which is very essential to have the energy to survive. So this is the one pathway that we are working and that will be useful for most of the variant because they need the food. But for other where they do modification on the surface of the protein and nucleotides, then each time we have to look for a different analog of them, the severe. And that is being also in the process that people, they try to see that where we can do the modification on amino acid either uh, and some of the nucleotides that what are, what type of decoration has to be done to 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 to, to really um, attack either to to treat it either to kill it well and any any drugs that we are giving if it is uh, uh, for example if we take some of the amino acid that is uh, uh, based on uh, uh, neuro-oncological where we want to really track on the amino acid. And if it is uh, going to the to the crossing the barrier and then if there is no, then certainly time takes time to 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 to, um, to metabolize from there, then certainly some side effects will be always there. So like, for example, uh, when if, if, we, if there is only two pathways that we try to see that it will be excreted either hepato, either renal, then certainly some side effect will be there. But that is so minimal compared to the effect that we are going to see on the site where dynamic that we like to see and the drugs would reach there will be more, much more appreciable than the, the organ that we are going to damage. Yes, like lamotrigine, either any hepatitis C drugs that you talk about, that they are having the effect on the liver. And the liver, not only in the liver, also certain extent is the cardiac that we talked about. So certainly it will be uh, uh, giving that if it, the doses uh, are given, not that is required either. Uh, if it is not, uh, you, you see that whenever we get all these drugs that the quality control has been really compromised when we get it from the uh, different resources. Like for example, first we were getting 80 milligram and then after that it 40 milligram. And then we are giving in place of five, we are giving the 10 doses. And that is where uh, is, is, is give the side effect uh, and then the liver damage and the other things takes place that you talk about the jaundice. Yes, it is because you know that uh, always that uh, regeneration of liver is even you do the surgery that also it regenerated. It's only that the lung damage when takes place, then it is very difficult. Reason being that also for that they are taking many uh, protein now. It is coming like fibroblast activator protein that we talk about, FAPI, that can be used, but this is not available in the country for the time being. Yes, please. So thank you all. Thanks all the participants. Uh, I, on behalf of the Institute, once again, we thank uh, Professor Dr. Mishra. And unfortunately he can't uh, listen to us. So uh, we request you uh, to please write uh, whatever you want to write for this program. So before we uh, begin with the formal valedictory, I would like to get the uh, 
feedback from the participants. I'm writing because Professor, uh, Dr. Um, no, now I'm able to hear if you are able to hear me, right? Okay, you, um, I can hear, you can hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah ma'am, I can hear oh, you. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So uh, once again, on behalf of the entire Institute, we sincerely thank you and that you took out time out of your busy schedule. We knew that uh, you were keeping busy in this week also. And uh, it has been uh, such a nice experience listening to you, Dr. Mishra. <clears throat> we uh, have uh, in this uh, valedictory program, we have uh, other experts also, Professor Kanchan Mukherjee from uh, Tata Institute of uh, Social Sciences. Hello, uh, thank you. Yeah, he was one of the keynote. Uh, Professor Mukherjee, nice to see you. Same here, same here, sir. Very nice to see you. <laughs> Doctor, I've just kept my video yeah. off for internet connectivity issues. Yes, yes. It must be raining in Mumbai too. Yes, yes. We are, we are under rains now. But yes. today it's been clear. <laughs> and Professor Mukherjee, while you were uh, de delivering lecture, we heard very beautiful uh, bird singing songs <laughs> from the background as well <laughs> today in the morning. <laughs> okay, so, thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah. We that have because it's beautiful. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... Uh, <clears throat> so for a formal valedictory, I invite uh, all my colleagues, especially uh, the head of computer science, uh, Dr. Atul Gupta. Uh, I hope he's here. He was here. Uh, yeah. Dr. Atul Gupta, uh, will you please? Yeah. So, I mean, it was a little hectic day, you know, that uh, uh, this workshop and uh, I mean, all of a sudden we got a session on uh, um, like that DGX station that we have procured. And uh, since we have to move further, so that was also like, uh, in some sense, like I have to manage. So sorry for like, uh, for like not uh, fully devoted to this uh, later sessions, but morning session I enjoyed. Uh, the talk by uh, Professor It was very nice. Manish, uh, will you please mute your mic? I'm sorry. Manish, it seems that there are two voices. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Atul, can you please continue? Uh, so Professor Kanchan was like, uh, it was a nice talk, a very uh, well composed one, uh, like uh, the healthcare, uh, the dimensions, the opportunities, the role of startup. Uh, and um, yeah, I was, I, I had one uh, useful questions regarding that, how can we participate as, a, as being like people from academia? So the kind of uh, innovations that are taking place in healthcare, uh, domain. So overall, I think it was a good uh, set of sessions. I mean, people from various domains, so obviously they're domain experts from those domains, they have uh, shared their ideas, their visions. And obviously we are from computing science, so we look for the, uh, like wherever we can find opportunity to get into the scenario and think about our role what can be our role in those kind of scenarios? So this was wonderful, like uh, um, yeah, workshop, and I congratulate uh, Professor Roja, uh, Dr. Preeti Khanna uh, for organizing such a wonderful workshop. I mean, uh, inviting these people who are from uh, different domains, and actually, uh, where where the problems actually lies. So uh, I mean, uh, hearing from horse's mouth, a kind of like where we can see, uh, understand that these are the problem or these are the challenges and how we can prepare better our future generation to like handle those challenges. So this was wonderful, madam, uh, uh, with your like, coordination and the support. Uh, you have managed um, some wonderful speakers. So heads up to you and um, thank you very much. 
and to Dr. Khanna to organizing this workshop. I hope that we will have many more such events where uh, domain experts from uh, different places uh, which can come and, 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 and have uh, in, uh, interact, uh, interacting with us. So thank you very much. And please uh, yeah, proceed for uh, conclusion. Thank you, Dr. Atul. You have already been the backbone in all these uh, our endeavors. And uh, we have with us uh, Professor Puneet Tandon. Uh, I, he is uh, head of mechanical engineering and uh, uh, he has been a professor of design and mechanical engineering both. He has uh, several, he has done several projects which are very innovative and uh, especially for biomedical applications. So may I request to Professor Tandon, if you're there, can you say a few words? Well, thank you, ma'am, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, really, the, the day when I heard about the topic, healthcare innovations, that was uh, very up, particularly not only based upon the situation, but if you look from the time perspective, that's uh, going to be the in thing. Uh, I very strongly believe that the, as these days we talk about uh, things like AI, ML and uh, deep learning, the future is definitely towards healthcare innovations. And when we talk of healthcare innovations, uh, probably this, is, this has to be truly multidisciplinary domain where uh, alone neither doctors nor engineers nor scientists can survive. So we need team, we need proper handshaking between among the uh, uh, people who work in the domain of medicines, science, engineering, chemistry, as uh, Dr. Mishra's lecture very aptly pointed out today. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a complex. We know that probably as a mechanical engineer, I can say that probably the, the most complicated machine is human body. So, and uh, like alone, uh, we cannot uh, address the problems. So we have to form a team to look into the future problems which uh, mankind may face. I wish uh, we should not, but yes, we should be ready for that. And for that, both the words are very important, innovations and healthcare. And when you join them, the, it's, it's not one plus one, two, it's probably one plus 100 type of thing. So this was very odd. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't go through all the presentation, but I had the privilege of listening to a few eminent speakers. It was wonderful. And I must congratulate both the organizers for uh, organizing such a workshop. And I am very optimistic that surely we'll have sequels to such workshops also. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you so very much. Yes, I mean, uh, this idea when uh, on 25th of May, we organized a one day awareness program. We thought of uh, have making it a sequence and that this is a second in the sequence. And we will continue with this uh, until we get a foolproof uh, solution for COVID and any other uh, such uh, virus thing. Thank you so very much, Dr. Tandon. Uh, we have Professor Mukherjee. Would you like to say, uh, uh, address the audience? Thank you, Professor Oja. And I would say that it was an absolute pleasure, pleasure for me to be here, to be part of this workshop. And I come from a medical background, partly economics. So I heard engineers, and as rightly said by Professor Tandon, and a point which I made in the morning, the transdisciplinary and the multidisciplinary approach is very, very key to addressing uh, an enemy which is very smart. And I think we have to be smarter by working in teams, working in groups with a common objective. And I think this workshop has been able to bring people from different backgrounds together in a common platform. And I think it's just the beginning of more uh, future better steps to happen. So congratulations to you and your team. And I really enjoyed my time over here and I hope what I've shared will be useful to the participants in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee. It was a pleasure to listening to you. We really learned a lot 
And now Dr. Mishra's lecture gave us another direction to think about you know, how uh, we have been uh, from the ancient time, uh, India has been one of the maybe leaders in um, fighting with, uh, in, I mean, making the system immune, human system immune. We have Dr. Kavita, who was uh, also a speaker at, uh, as an, for an invited talk. Kavita ji, would you like to say something? We can have a, a couple of uh, feedbacks or views from the audience, uh, if you would like to say, uh, oh, I mean, say something. I can hear, I can uh, read out all the chats uh, here. Uh, wonderful, so encouraging uh, chat messages. We sincerely thank you participants. Without you, nothing can be successful. So it was only because you were participating actively, we could, uh, we could uh, have such wonderful sessions, which were so useful for all of us. Anyone else who would like to say something? If not, then I would invite, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Preeti Khanna to just very briefly tell uh, about uh, the proceedings of the workshop and then final word from Dr. Mishra, because uh, I mean, we, will, we would like to keep inviting you, sirs, Professor Mukherjee and Professor Mishra and Kavita Madam, uh, all, all, the part, all the guest speakers. Preeti, are you there? Yeah. So respected Dr. Mishra, chief guest of the occasion, uh, Dr. Mukherjee, uh, Dr. Vishwakarma, uh, head of the discipline, Dr. Gupta, Professor Dandan, Professor Ojha, my, and my fellow colleagues and participants. Uh, it is my pleasure to, well, uh, to uh, tell you the account of this workshop in this lively evening. And uh, uh, to mention that we have organized seven keynote lectures, an invited talk, and five presentation sessions in this workshop. Uh, the workshop uh, started with a thrilling keynote lecture on oxygen enrichment technology by Professor Hari Shirani, director CSIR Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute, Durgapur, where he showcased the oxygen concentrator and the mask designed by him and his team. And uh, the next session was on frugal innovations in the face of COVID-19 pandemic by Professor Dhananjay Sharma, head of the Department of Surgery, uh, Medical College, Jabalpur. And uh, Professor Sharma is working hard to devise affordable operative techniques for three and a half decades. And he has shown us uh, many such examples where we can uh, take things in a easy manner. And this session was followed by the keynote delivered by Dr. Amitabh Banerjee from uh, Dr. D.Y. Patel Vidyapeet Pune on COVID-19, innovative approaches to fight the pandemic. And uh, today's session was started with a keynote on healthcare innovations and ecosystems, COVID-19 and beyond by Professor Kanchan Mukherjee, uh, professor in the School of Health System Studies, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. We just heard him. Uh, and uh, the talk was very interesting. Uh, and uh, he uh, told us about the healthcare, all sort of healthcare dimensions, healthcare ecosystems, as well as the role of startups for healthcare, which is very important for many of the participants uh, here, because we wish uh, India to come forward uh, in this direction. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, and uh, his lecture was uh, followed by keynote on COVID is not a last pandemic. We have to keep it in mind. So areas of innovations for handling pandemics uh, by Dr. Shashank Purvar from uh, AIMS Bhopal. After that, uh, Dr. Kavita Vishwakarma and Dr. Deepu Palal from uh, D.Y. Patel Medical College, Pune, they explained us an innovative approach to monitor a COVID uh, sero uh, survey uh, using real-time cluster mapping. And, uh, then uh, after the break in the afternoon session, we listened to Dr. Paribal Swami from Jabalpur uh, Medical College on uh, COVID-accelerated healthcare innovations, reality reality, promise, and future. And he, uh, he actually uh, given us uh, many ideas 
uh, again uh, how our young generation may proceed to help them uh, in taking up things in a better way and then we just listened to the wonderful keynote delivered by uh, dr anil kumar mishra ji sir uh, the, and uh, on copper in covid outbreak so many things we know but uh, i mean somehow we have uh, forgotten so uh, i mean uh, person like him i mean perfectly fit for reminding our new generation that we are having so many things already don't forget them thank you so much sir for being with us and apart from these keynote lectures we also uh, witnessed 12 uh, party 12 uh, talks or uh, innovative ideas by participants and some of them were very interesting i mean all of them were interesting of course and very relevant also because like how to treat the covid 19 waste or how to use the ai for uh, prediction of covid 19 and then innovations in the healthcare support system what uh, what uh, as assistant in the patient isolation ward i mean just to few because all cannot be uh, without here so uh, at the end i would we would like to say that uh, as a workshop organizers we uh, we sincerely hope that this workshop has given enough food for your thought process and will help you to contribute uh, in our battle against corona virus and thank you so much for being with us in these two days journey uh, have a good day thank you so much thank you thank you priti uh, for your nice uh... detailing of the workshop and uh, we also heard from very young minds about uh, their innovative ideas i'm sure that they are going to create uh, something very useful for the uh, for the society professor uh, dr mishra uh, we would like to hear from you finally uh, before we conclude dr mishra a uh, very good evening to everyone i'm um, really delighted and uh, put in the record that um, being a institute of eminent and um, uh, working in the different discipline of electronics electrical mechanical thought about that um, uh, medical innovation for covid-19 is a very um, appropriate topic topic has been chosen by uh, you ma'am and your team um, i fully agree with um, professor tandon that he was talking about that the best system that we have got is the human system where you talk about retina to hippocampus the electronic circuit that we talk about anything is broken and anything is leak out is like electrical circuit and you can imagine that what type of uh, you no know, reaction is going to take place so to find out that where what is broken and what is coming out is very important for everybody has to to study and that's why uh, a team of the people working together either engineering background either biological background and mathematical background physics background because now we say that science has got no boundary like that subjects they have got no boundary we have to work together if you really want to find a solution and um, i really congratulate you ma'am that you thought about this to organize uh, such a wonderful meeting i walked through all the lectures that was you know uh, put at on your program and then uh, Uh, eminent speaker that you had invited to to enlighten all all your colleagues and um, faculty that they certainly will get benefited out of it um, with these few words uh, i really congratulate you that um, you have taken a very nice initiative and anything is needed from our institute from the audio certainly will be there for uh, assistant either help either to shake hand and to share the knowledge uh, in the area of uh, covid 19 uh, since we have been working for last two years tirelessly in this area thank you very much for your invite ma'am and i wish you everyone all the best thank you thank you so much sir thank you thank you sir thank you professor mukherjee thanks to everybody thanks to professor kavita also uh, so covid has given us an opportunity to have lectures by eminent speakers like you sitting at home we can hear uh, we can listen to you <laughs> that is one opportunity Uh, but uh, let us hope that covid is over and we can have face to face uh, interaction okay. with you at our institute professor mukherjee uh, dr mishra both of you are invited whenever this is gone we would like to invite you it would be my pleasure it would be my pleasure to come to jabalpur excellent i i, I wish to see the narmada once again 
Okay, thank you so very much, Dr. Mishra. Yeah. Dr. Professor Mukherjee. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. With this, thank you. Thank I you. sincerely thank all the participants. Stay home, stay safe, and even if you are going out, please take full precautions until COVID is gone. Even if uh, COVID is gone, let us be uh, remind ourselves to remain safe and healthy. That's all. Before, thank uh, you, before, sir. Uh, before you ending, much. we would like to thank uh, our director, sir, Professor Sanjeev Jain, for uh, always motivating us to organize such events, and uh, our head of the department, Dr. Atul Gupta, for uh, always, uh, I mean, being uh, supportive to us. So thank you so much. Thank you. I remember that our director, sir, uh, told us to think about some programs on innovations. And the one that immediately came to my mind was innovations in healthcare at present. Thank you so very much, all of you. Thanks. Thank you very much. May I leave, ma'am? Yes, sir. We, we are ending the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you.